Hey, what's up? I felt like making a couple videos, so that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Um, so I have changed some of the settings on my camera to record in a different format. Um, it's uh, MP4 instead of AV something or whatever. Um, and so it's 720p instead of 10, 80. Um, I don't know how much of a difference this is going to make, like affecting the quality for people watching on different things. So if you're one of the few people who watch my videos and if you feel that there is a drastic uh, decrease in the quality of the video, I would appreciate it if you would comment in the um, comment section of these videos because that's kind of the only way I'm going to know. Well, I mean, I could run some kind of a test, but I would just appreciate it. And um, if if all's good, then say nothing and I'll just continue. But it might help me to not uh, overheat my camera and be able to make longer videos and whatnot. And that's great, less stress for me. And so, yeah. Um, so the, a thing happened today where I was, uh, I made, you know, I started a new job and I was like, talking with some friends and made some friends when this one girl and she's in music production she's like oh it's so cool because that's so close to my heart and then there's another girl too that we got all this kind of stuff like poetry and music and stuff like that in common too so it's just like yeah I've been making friends and I'm like you know you start getting to know a person and you want to like share and all of a sudden I found myself sharing my life story right I mean I mean in a nutshell and so I just thought but it got cut short and I just thought it would be kind of cool you know, imagine I could just make a video about my life story in a nutshell as fast as possible and just see if I could do it. So this is it. So I um, was born in Canada. Um, I, uh, my parents split up when I was pretty young, lived with my dad and like my mom. Mm, um, I will say this. When she passed on... Um, there was a quote that I used of hers, um, that in like the picture thing that I made and it said, I choose to stay living in the streets until the rest of mankind has a roof over its head. Um, so yeah, my mom was a person who had, um, who lived in that way. And, um, anyways, I, but I never held it against her. I knew that she had things that she was struggling with and I didn't understand it, but I, I understood that it was not anything, you know, that I needed to take on board. And so we did get to know each other a bit later in life, um, before she passed over to the other side. Um, but yeah, mom, this is... My necklace, my sister ripped it off me. I guess I was being a brat when I was young and then my dad held onto it for a lot of years. And this is my mom to me, so I wear it all the time. It's very special. I, yeah, um, I keep it close to my heart. Um, yeah, so mom. And then, you know, growing up, it was like tough. I didn't feel connected to a whole lot and but so I learned at a very young age that I needed to take care of myself and to love myself and to be there for myself and you know that's special so you might think oh well you didn't have this you didn't have that but you know some people as adults don't um, have self-love and so you know there's two sides to everything it's not the car the hand you've been dealt it's what you do with it and so yeah I've been able to make um work with what's been given to me in life and uh, and it's been transformational and so anyways moving forward you know grew up and so i am dutch indonesian so i have some darkness to me um and like yeah i didn't fit in you know certainly in the 80s 90s things were a lot more racist and it was hard you know i still don't you know some people they got these groups it's like you're a part of this it's like i don't have that i don't have support you know i'm not a part of you know this group and this and that so it's tough i'm just kind of like in the middle but i've you know been lost but found my way 
and it's okay, you know, just to be a real mix of stuff and to still fit in anyways. And then I like, yeah, you know, I, I grew up, you know, say out of high school, eventually found my way with that. And, and it was good. I, I, I started feeling myself and like being, you know, I'm, I'm the same. I am the same. Uh, people say that about me is that I'm like a big kid. I haven't changed a whole lot since I was young. I was always very goofy and funny and like, uh, yeah, I mean, that's me. Uh, and so, and I think that is one of the reasons why I retain a degree of my youth is because I haven't lost touch with my inner child. I've always, um, yeah, I've I didn't grow up too much. I did. I mean, I pride myself on the maturity, the level of maturity that I've reached in life. Um, but you know, it also is, is, there's this thing, it's like, there's no such thing as a self-made man. So it's not like I can even take credit for it. You know, I have been a, a participant in this experience and I have, um, handled it in a way that has allowed me to grow, um, in the way that I has happened. And so, yeah, I am, um, you know, getting older, you know, say like early 20s, and it was just like, oh, you know, I wasn't feeling what everybody else was into. But I was, so I was like, okay, how how can I differentiate myself from other people? I was like, well, okay, get into motorcycles and guns because you have to get a license and you have to, you know, get into it. It takes an investment. And of course, that didn't exactly le land me into the friend group that I was looking for. I mean, there's a range of people that are into that kind of stuff. And I was like, okay, so that wasn't quite it. But then I um, met somebody um, and she was English and she was going to university and I ended up moving to England for a couple of years. And I was like, oh, where did all the smart people go? They went to university. But then you get there and you realize that it's like, oh, you know, a good portion of these people don't even want to be there. and and you know everybody's got their reasons for what they're doing some people it's just in their family it's just how it goes it wasn't something in my family my dad is a mechanic i worked in the trades you know it wasn't even a consideration going to i mean but i got straight f's and d's all through school i got one a and it was in english uh and then it was like in grade 12 like in my whole school all 12 years one a yeah, and they, I, I learned later that they just moved me on because I would have been too disruptive. And I was because I have ADHD. Um, it, and to me, it's just called awesomeness. I have a lot of energy and I like, I require a degree of stimulation. Um, superficiality and just basicness isn't enough. I, I need profundity and um, and complexity it's just who I am and I embrace that there's nothing yeah ADHD goodbye awesomeness that is what I have and so OCD as well because that's what my mother had um, they call it obsessive compulsive disorder but I call it and I have this but it is an acute um, sense of spatial awareness and an attention to detail and it's it's just you know able to pick up on things. I mean, of course, if you don't harness these energies, they could run rampant in your life. And yeah, it can create problems. But I mean, that's a gift. I mean, welcome to having a gift. And then also, um, yeah, I mean, and they tried putting me on drugs that didn't work when I was a kid. And um, yeah, anyways, but I found my way with it. I'm also what I would consider to be bipolar. I am like super shy. I am extremely introverted, but I'm also extremely um, confident. I've learned that. I've studied extroverted people and I've, yeah, I've come into my own with it. So I've learned and yeah, so like I am both. I am, I have a very feminine side. Yeah, my sexiness. And then, and then very masculine too. Like I, very firm, very strong. Yeah, very, but then the expressive. So it's just like, you know, a person. I'm a human being and I'm on this earth and I'm figuring it out. And anyways, so getting older, yeah, then like you know, the whole university thing, then, you know, I started getting sick 
and my body was just rejecting anything that was unnatural and it took a long time to understand what that means anyway so then like in like in that time too you start you know you hear about this guy Che Guevara and you hear this word revolution it's like what is that isn't the world just good <laughs> right and there's more to it and, and it started like let's do a little mortal technique and it was just like and I got beef with that guy because he I mean, I'm just going to say it right now. He, he's, there's, there's a song called Beef and Broccoli where he goes on about how like being vegan or vegetarian isn't revolutionary. It's a dietary choice. Okay, exactly how, buddy? Um, standing up for those who are voiceless, uh, taking a stand for what you know is right. You know, when you have no connection, nothing to actually gain from this, you're just making like, you know, to, to, to discipline yourself in such a way get out of here you know I understand he was you know running his mouth and we all do that but there is the correction to that wrong that song beef and broccoli wrong anyways and so but grateful for all of his music I mean it helped to wake me up and also rage against the machine too you start to realize that there's this like uh uh discont you know there's like more to what's going on in the world and so, you know, learning about that stuff, and then I eventually came back to Canada and it was a rough relationship with this woman. We did end up getting married and divorced and stuff like that. But, you know, and it started, you know, I started, uh, came back to Canada and I started tying rebar after a big lap around the world. And then started tying rebar and I was like, somebody gave me this copy of a video it was zeitgeist it was uh, about money and christianity or like religion and um and something else um conspiracy kind of stuff anyways and i got into that and, and oh and 9 11 so i started getting into conspiracy stuff but then it didn't make sense because it was like okay hold on a second here it didn't make sense it's like oh it's all about power and money it's like so these people have all this power and all this money but it's all about power and money it's like no it's about something else and then that was how you know, the beginning of starting to formulate a spiritual understanding and when the student is ready, the teacher appears and hermeticism came my way and Taoism came my way and channeling came my way because my soul was ready for this kind of stuff and it just came on board and then like I started, yeah, I mean, figuring this stuff out and, and the, the part, yeah, my wife, she had a and that doesn't even matter. And then like, so anyways, and then we, we split up and it was just like, I was starting a kombucha business. I thought it was the coolest thing. I've learned otherwise now. I do not recommend it or sauerkraut or vinegar of any kind or anything that like um, kills micro, microbes, microscopic organisms because you're a super organism and you do not want to put anything in you that would upset your microbiome or kill anything. I mean, yeah. And so, I mean too much you know you might have a beer once in a while but don't do it all the time you know recognize the impact that it has anyways and so it was like i had this business and it was like sprouting and kombucha and sauerkraut and then tea and all this kind of stuff and then like i had somebody because i was into this stuff and i would talk about it at times because i was fascinated and then somebody asked me to teach them and i was like i can't but then I realized, it's like, you know, I ended up selling these, this kombucha stuff to well-to-do rich kind of people. And it's just like, wow, if I can slang kombucha, maybe I could, you know, be a person who I could sell books, you know? And I was like, okay. So I, I didn't, instead of like signing leases, because that's when it becomes really serious. You know, when you start a business, you start signing leases. It's like, it's... You know, you're locked in. You're going to do that. You got that ball rolling. I was like, you know what? This is not why I'm on this planet. I am here to write a book about spirituality. And so I stopped and I spent 10 years writing a book about spirituality in that time. I It was after my divorce. I was devastated. I was, you know, for four years, I cried just like all day, every day. And then in the fifth year, I kind of came out of it. I was celibate for over seven years. And then eventually I... I sold our condo and then I went traveling. I just went to Mexico and like fell on the beach and cried. I know I've made a video with like the poem that I wrote when I was there and finished when I was here. But like, 
you know, it took so much to get to that point in life. And then, yeah, then, you know, I was very much into plant medicine and like learning about all this kind of stuff. And I'm very grateful for that path. But I, um, as using the traditional Buddhist metaphor, I crossed my river. They say that you use a boat to cross a river. And then, but once you cross the river, you don't take the boat with you or else it becomes a burden. And so I, um, I'm super grateful to the sacred mushroom, the cheeky little lady who helped me to sort out my my past and my present and to other medicines as well for that. But now I do not work with these medicines anymore simply because, I mean, it partially has to do with the practice of yoga because it kind of, it takes the place of that, um, meditation specifically, but also just because she doesn't call my name. If she did, I would, co I would go to her if she called me, but she does not. I do believe that I have embodied um, the teaching of that master teacher. And so I am super grateful for that. And uh, yeah, um, anyways, it then, yeah, I mean, just figuring myself out and then writing the book and then moving to Vancouver into this house and it was so cool and there was all these friends and it was neat. And then I like ended up um, getting involved with a girl and it was cool and then it all fell apart. I was like at the peak of my life and then it fell apart and then um, things were very complicated with her. Um, and then so... I ended up, um, I went to Tofino, this place where they're surfing, and I went there and I married some people because they like what I'm about, because if they wanted somebody to say some beautiful spiritual things about the nature of sacred relationship and how important it is rather than just, you know, dah, 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 you're married, right? So that is something that I do. Um, and I would do it if somebody wanted me to. Yeah, I, if, yeah, I, I wish I could get my, anyways. My marriage commissioner license, but it's not so easy. Um, anyway, so and then when I was there, then I got robbed, and because like I, when I sold my place, I took the money and ran. I was like, I can finish my book and I can do all this stuff, and so I was like, and then I didn't work for four years, and so then and I like I had I had the, yeah, I was like working on my book, do do and going to all over uh, uh, Latino America to learn Spanish and to experience the culture and to work with plant medicine and stuff like that but then like yeah I, I ended up in, in Vancouver there and that all fell apart and then I put all my yeah the, the I, I set up a music studio just home based but I mean still my music studio and which I still have but when I was doing the wedding I got robbed my storage unit got robbed by two guys who worked at a public storage place in Vancouver. They stole uh, like a $10,000 computer uh, MacBook or an iMac Pro. They stole guitars. They stole my, my green earrings, my emeralds. They stole all of my jewelry. They stole my big jar of mushrooms. They stole all a lot of things that were really um, close, special to me. Um, if you ever, if anybody sees this and they have any information about how we could rectify this situation, that would be great because those guys stole my stuff, you know, and I found my peace with it. It was really difficult. But, you know, when I was young, I used to steal stuff. I was not exactly a klepto, but when I was young, I did steal from people that were close to me. And that was pretty bad. Uh, as I got older, I would steal just from department stores and stuff like that because it's like, hey, they're robbing you anyways. But, um, oh, I am overheating. Anyway, so like, but I decide, you know, it's like, as I got into the spiritual stuff, it's like, this doesn't make any sense because you're putting out a message that you need to take in order to receive. And it's just like, hey, and I haven't stolen anything since. Um, there was one thing once that I um, went through a till and I it was there and I didn't end up paying for it. And then something similar happened. And it was like, no, do not, you know, sure that happened, but don't make the choice to do it again and I didn't and I think that was a test and that's like something that is you're forgiven for and so that's like uh, yeah super important um all right so 
And then, um, yeah, I ended up, um, yeah, all that thing crashed down, but I started learning about a certain kind of a person uh, through these trials and tribulations, and it is called the narcissist. I have become uh, well-versed in the movements of narcissism, and this is something that I will talk about in depth in time, um, not right now, but uh, it's going to happen. And so, yeah, just learning about this and... It was kind of funny because it's like I wanted to learn about it. And this was also because I am a fierce intellectual and I was also, but through living in this house, I was learning about how to get out of my head and into my heart. And that was a very important, very special thing for me to do. And so, um, yeah, and then... After everything was spinning out of control, I just beelined it for Mexico. I made it to Puerto Escondido, which is, you know, it's my favorite place anyways. And then I was lost until I was on a beach and I hear, and I just got rejected by a girl. And so it was just like, oh, I'm going to go take a walk. And then, and then I hear my name, Yoshi. And... Uh, somebody who I had ran into years before in Guatemala, a beautiful Colombian girl, and there she was. And all of a sudden I was, you know, from getting rejected to being in the arms of a beautiful Colombian girl. But she was like with somebody. And then I ended up getting involved with another person and coming back to Canada. Right. So, yeah. So then I had made my, yeah, I fell in love with somebody or obviously it wasn't love but um, got involved with somebody uh, that I had known um, and um, came back to Canada, ended up in this relationship, I mean, with somebody. It was a, you know, I'm grateful for the experience. It was a wonderful time in my life. Um, yeah, and I have nothing bad to say about it. Um, but um, so it was right as COVID hit. And then all of a sudden, you know, I would say we didn't stand a chance. I wasn't mature enough. I'm not going to speak about her um, because I don't talk about people. But um, yeah, we were not uh, there and uh, it was tough with COVID and just things as it as it all played out ended up um, splitting up. But like during that, I got to learn more about um, narcissism and so it's a funny thing, you know, like if you've never seen it before, you don't really know what to look for. You, you know, for a person like myself, I am an empath. I am somebody who feels deeply. And, you know, there's this, there's this issue of projection where it's like, you know, I'm just kind of a nice person. And so you just kind of, I just assume that everybody takes uh, a lot of time and reflects on everything that they do, that they're involved in, everything that they've done. Um, and and really looks at at it just to take account of of um, who you are and w what impact you're having on other people so that you can make adjustments and fine tune um, the way that you be and, and, and behave um, just to be a better person and evolve. And this isn't the case with uh, everybody. Not everybody operates on that kind of a level. Um, and so it's confusing if you, you know, you, you wouldn't think that somebody would like really use you. And I'm not saying who it was that used me. Like I said, I've been exposed to a number of people um, that I do believe or, or who have all of the signs, 10 out of 10 of the main signs of this. Um, you know, things like gaslighting and things like... Um, yeah, hypocrisy and just like, uh, you know, it's not supposed to be fair with them. It's like, you know, you'd be like, hey, it's in the, and, and then you realize it's like, how does this? And then you start looking into it and it's just like, wow, this is this is something that is very deep. You know, as I understand it, it is uh, um, so it, it, it very often runs in families Um especially with women, there is a group called Daughters of Narcissistic Mothers because if you grow up in that environment, people who will lie uh, just to get their way, to manipulate, to control, and just to, 
to be right and there's this power struggle and it's weird if you're not used to that kind of a thing and so it's like um you know if you grow grew up in that kind of an environment then it's like you that's normal to to be um if the ego that the power struggle with people to to yeah and it's it's very it's very odd if you're if you're not um if that's not how you were brought up or just something that you're aware of. I mean, it's very strange behavior and it's very difficult to, um, you can't help a person with that. It it is a self-help thing. You have to, they have to come to it themselves um, because it's not, it's not, it's not you, it's everybody else. And so it's just like, yeah, it it, it is a tricky thing. Uh, Most of the time they say, just walk away. It, you probably do not have the tools um, to handle the situation. I I wonder if now I do, but I wouldn't allow myself into a situation. Uh, you know, I am aware enough of the signs. I do not overlook any red flags. It's not three, it's one. One red flag is enough. It's just because it's a window. I mean, and there, there's just more red flags behind it. And it's not, it's not about judging people or being harsh or anything like that. You know, you, you give people chances, but the first red flag, it's like, be aware. All of a sudden it's like, oh, you know, hair stand up. These are my feelers. It's like something's telling me intuition, listen to it, be careful, be super careful. And so, yeah, like learning about this kind of stuff and then, and so super grateful because I managed to crack into this and to wrap my myself around it to understand it. And then, so now I can share um, certainly my what my experiences are and what my understanding of it is, um, which is to do with based on like a, a fragile sense of self. Because if you were... You know, if you're super fragile, you can't take criticism. You're not able, that's, and so that's why there's no reflecting. And so it's like, yeah, it's a very, it's a very delicate thing. You know, you could push a person. So, you know, and this is a person who is hurt too. You know, this person needs the most love. This person needs the most gentleness, right? This is a hypersensitive person. So it's like, this is not somebody to condemn or look down on. This is, this is a, yeah, a person who, yeah, you need to feel deeply for and, um, yeah, and maybe need some help anyways. So, but through these things, through these women, and then like people took sides in this friend group and I was kicked out. You know, who I am, I'm the same person, but people thought that I was this piece of garbage and I was devastated that I was just discarded like I didn't even matter to these people. Like it's like they it's like they just assumed the worst things about me and just like and just like, yeah, you're you're gone from the friend group. And I was absolutely devastated and I it took a long time to get over, but in being so hurt, so lost, so frustrated, I, um, I, uh, I found myself, you know, I was so disturbed. I, I, you know, I'm a peaceful person, but I was so disturbed. I was so shaken by what happened. I found inner peace. And that is a beautiful thing. I was also at the same time learning about like how healthy boundaries are the key to self-love. You cannot say that you love yourself if you allow people to walk all over you, right? And what you allow to continue will. You can, someone can only ride your back if you're bent over and just like, yeah, but when you stand up and you stand in your own power and you say, absolutely not, no. It's just like, it's a game changer. That's all what I'll say about that. So just like, it was a really hard thing, you know, losing all those friends, but you don't lose friends. You lose haters in disguise. Friends ask questions. Friends don't assume the worst. Friends say, hey, so, you know, and like they connect. And it was not my experience. Uh, some of these people, there's been a reconnection because I am a forgiving, loving person, but it was really hard going through what I did with uh, this whole scenario and just how it played out and how people, 
yeah, how what they figured about me. Anyways, um, but I accept it because I understand, you know, enough about my life that I'm, I, I need more than 10 fingers to count all the people who have royally screwed me over in life. Just like at a whim, like blamed. I've had three people blame me for robbing their house when they did it themselves. And then they got caught and none of them came clean. Ooh, like how dare you? But you know, all of it is, you know, they say the pendulum is hermetic philosophy, the law of rhythm, the pendulum swing, the swing to the right is equal to the swing to the left rhythm compensates. And it's like also the rubber band effect. So the farther you go into the dark, the farther it propels you into the light. And so this is a gift and I understand this on that level. So I've never taken it personally. I know that the way that my life has unfolded has been a gift which it allows me to translate the experiences because I am who I am and then I've gone through this stuff and I'm able to report on how I have gotten through it all you know like when I was young too I you know in my early 20s they, there was these people and they were involved in gangs and stuff and I took something even I was told that I could take something with somebody else and they said oh yeah you can take this it was a stereo out of a truck and then we took it, but then it belonged to these people and they were connected to, and then like, you know, I, little naive me, I remember one time walking into the kitchen and this guy's got all bloody hands. He's just, and I was like, oh man, are you okay? He's like, oh, you know how it is. And I was like, yeah, yeah. I did not know how it is, right? I, I was like, oh, he must have hurt himself, right? But of course he was, Ugh. anyways. And so like, you know, very naive. I mean, and innocent and just, Ugh. And then so like, yeah, this whole stereo thing and I, they ended up coming after me and I was living in the streets, you know, I, I was on the run. They stole all of my stuff and I had a lot of stuff and they took it all. And, um, yeah, nobody, I was so ashamed and lost. And I, that was when I, you know, I, I was lying in a field under a, under potato sacks, trying to stay warm at night. You know, your socks have deteriorated, just like life is just like spinning out of control, just lost. And it's just like so ashamed. I don't, I'm, I'm ashamed to go to my friends or my family. I don't want to cause any more problems. And it's like, how did this happen? And it was during that time, that night in the potato field where I had an epiphany where I was looking up at the stars and I realized that this was no different than any other time in my life. And it was like, if I can, if, you know, I, I can change my life at any time. And then I got up the next day and I walked to the next town and I got myself a job and I got myself cleaned up. And before I knew it, I had a vehicle and I had, um, I had money and I was able to turn my life around and I had, I eventually got a girlfriend and, you know, and like things changed, but it, that was, you know, living on the streets for a little bit. Uh, it, it, uh, yeah, it just shook me anyway. So yeah, you know, you, you learn from the life experiences. I certainly do. And, um, you know, then getting, getting hurt by those people in Vancouver, yeah, I, I say I've never been so hurt, but I've been that hurt so many times. But that's, you know, it is it is because of that is who I am now. And, you know, I wouldn't take it back because I am aware of how far I've come. And it's, uh, to me, it's beautiful. And so the other thing, yeah, and so, you know, figuring all that kind of stuff out, and then, yeah, I mean, aside from that, that's basically my, my story. I mean, I eventually started, had to start working again because I spent all my money and my life had fallen apart too many times. And then just like, um, and so here I am. I mean, I have some stuff, um, but I, you know, spent all my money. And so I had to start working with a friend of mine, which was really tough because we were very different. It, you know, I change at such a rate that, you know, it, it, I basically, with most people, there's the only thing that we have in common is the past or with a lot of people. I, I, um, but I'm, you know, and that's okay. 
Um, you know, you don't have to be like people, but you also have to find your way with it. Um, you have to, f you, you know, and I have, you know, to be able to maintain certain friendships with people who are different than I. But now I don't allow anybody into my life that is um, incongruent with uh, the philosophy that I stand behind. Um, yeah. And so if um, I do not put up with ego... Uh, at all and so uh, I give anybody a chance multiple chances but I am uh, I'm aware of how to recognize ego in its many forms and so yeah you know that's the thing but um yeah I've you know stepped away from that job and then now I have and then you know and then now we're just friends it's like we don't work together and it's so much healthier and now I'm doing this new thing at this new place and it's great it's like everything's kind of slotting in and doing this YouTube thing and making music and meeting people and things are really happening in yoga too. I mean, I'm really, I'm going to make a video about yoga ASAP, just about what it means to me and what it has become. Cause I, yeah, it's become a thing. Um, yeah. So that is me. Um, yeah. Mr. Snook, that's me. From the depths of the sea, back to the wax, snook, doggy dog, funky, but d d the dock. Yeah, so, yeah, that's me in a nutshell. I, I don't know. I think it's, yeah, that's my life story anyways. And I hope you enjoyed it. I have enjoyed it, even though it's been crazy. But yeah, I, I, yeah it's been a life. So anyways, take care.